Okay, so we are now getting down to a topic in corporate finance called uh, uh, Temple of Money as we wrap it up. Okay, I know Mr. Njovu could have started it at the time, but we are now looking at the temple of money. And in particular, we we'll look at annuities, what's an annuity, all right? Then getting down to the, the other part of this problem, okay? So as we're looking at this, we are simply saying, an annuity is a series of eco payments or eco deposits, is what we call an annuity. Annuity is a series of eco payments or eco deposits. Okay, or an annuity uh, represents a series of eco payments uh, or receipts occurring uh, over a specified number of equidistant periods. And of course, there are two types of annuities. We have uh, ordinary annuities, an annuity where payments or receipts are made or occur at the end of each period. That is just about an ordinary annuity, an annuity where payments or deposits occur at the end of each period or uh, the month. And our annuity due, is a, uh, this is where payments or receipts occur at the beginning of each period. This is how we look at an annuity due. It's okay, so it's an annuity where we're talking about payments or deposits are being made at the beginning of each period is what we call an annuity due. All right, so this is just about the distinction between an annuity due and ordinary annuity. All right, so if you're making a deposit at the uh, beginning of the period uh, is called an annuity due. So ordinary is where payments or deposits are made at the end of the period. So ordinary annuity, you want to get, um, after you get your salary, you instruct the insurance company or rather the bank to deduct money as a stockholder, standing order, that every month that you get paid, you they get they deduct a five hundred quarter from your salary, as you are reserving, keeping it towards a certain project, or maybe your child wants to go to school in the shortest possible time, or in two years time, then every month when you get paid, they deduct a five hundred quarter. That five hundred quarter, if it is at the end of the month they are deducting, it becomes an ordinary annuity. So when finding the present value, interest factor of that annuity, then is equal to the formula, is equal to amount, then open brackets, one minus one plus R to the power negative N, okay? Then over R, this is just about how you get to the present value interest factor of that annuity. All right, so this ordinary is where payments or deposits are made or done at the end of the period. Then we have the future uh, value interest factor of annuity is actually equal to amount. Then here we have one plus R to the power N, okay, minus one, over R. This is on the future value interest factor of an annuity. And we're talking about this annuity is a value or the amount that has been that, that is being deducted by at the end of the period or the month. And we need to find the present value of that deduction. We have this formula these formulas are for the first one is the present value interest factor of an annuity then the other one is the future value interest factor of that annuity so these are the two uh, formulas that we need to understand as we get down to this then we have annuity due okay so annuity due we are simply saying this is where payment or deposits are done at the beginning so this is at the beginning 
Then the other one is at the end. Okay, so we have this at the beginning of the period. Then the other one is at the, the end. So to find the present value interest factor of that annuity is actually going to be amount of that annuity, the one minus one plus R to the power negative N over R, then whatever the situation we have here, multiply by one plus R. So this is about the formula to use as we look at present value interest factor annuity due we use this kind of the formula. Then getting down to the other one, the future value interest factor of annuity due is actually equal to amount, the open brackets one plus R to the power N, then minus one, over r then multiply by one plus r just like this so at because of the fact that this beginning we have an extra interest coming from day one to the 30 days because we have acquired the interest is there from day one to this is where this applies because we have the amount acquires or requires or applies or has gotten the entire interest from the period of the one to the other period. This is why we are talking about this one, getting down to this kind of a problem. All right, now, an ordinary annuity forgoes the interest for ordinary because this is at the end. So meaning that from the one to the last day, you only, uh, you, the interest is at the, it's at the end of the month, at day 30. Okay, so we need that it has forgone the interest, right? So it has forgone the interest because this is just done at the end of the period. So please take note of the distinctions between the two, ordinary annuity and annuity due. At the beginning, the interest applies from day one, the very day one, uh, up to uh, day 30. All right, so this is just about what goes on. Then we have the, what we call perpetuity. Perpetuity, uh, it's a continuous cash flow. Okay, so we have what we call perpetuity, which is on aspect of continuous. Okay, so this one is on continuous uh, cash flow, which is a cash flow of the same amount, so value of a perpetuity is equal to present value of perpetuity. Okay, so perpetuity, the present value is actually equal to amount over R. So this is it, the present value of perpetuity, amount over R. Okay, so this is just about the end of uh, annuities where we're looking at the, the types of annuities that we can go for and uh, the whatever goes on. So here we have the student loan payments for annuities, examples of annuities, student loan payments, local insurance, premium mortgage and retirement savings. Okay, pass annuities at the end of a period for ordinary and of period one, period two, Ordinary simply means payments or deposit done at the end. Okay, so this is just about what goes on. Then the other one for the annuities, we are I simply saying uh, it's where the payments or deposits are done at the beginning for parts of annuity due. So it's a beginning payment, beginning payment, beginning payment for annuity due. Okay, then ordinary, we are simply saying is at the end of the period, that is for ordinary annuity. So the distinction between the two are matters. Then getting down to the formula, we have this for a future value. We have this, these formulas are given, the like guy mentioned like I've given already for the future value one annuity. We have this one, all right, for this is for ordinary annuity where the payments or deposits 
uh, made or done at the end of the period and then the present value. So yeah, find the future value of an annuity for 1,000 because I paid at the end of each year for three years at interest rate of. So this one, the future value, for as long as they're saying at the end of each period, meaning that it's ordinary. It's ordinary because they're saying it's at the end. So this is ordinary, all right? When they just mention an exam at the end, so meaning that we need to find the amount, the number of years, three and the percentage is seven. So on the solution, we are getting down to this where we say um, amount is $3,000, okay? So we have this one as $3,000. Then we have our R, which is 7%. Then we have how many years have, have we have we been told so we can check for the number of years. Okay, so number of years here, three years. So number of years is three. Okay, so n is three. Okay, so now we can love to look at what are they asking us? Okay, for find the future value, we want to find the future value of that. So it's an ordinary annuity because the payments are made at the so future value. Uh, interest factor uh, of an, so future value interest factor of annuity you simply say you got amount then one plus r to the power n minus one over r so here we are going to say amount is three thousand so 3,000, the 1.07, excuse me, the power three minus one. All right. Then we divide by the 0 0.07. So you can find the future value interest factor of that annuity which is giving us what so just the multiplication 1.07 to the power 3 minus 1 then divide by 0 0.07 and multiply by 3000 so it's about 9644 uh, seven. So this is the future value factor of an annuity that we need to go for, please. So the formulas you need to really understand. So the future value is 9,000. Okay, so you are getting uh, the total future value interest factor of an annuity. Okay, so this is uh, uh, for it. So at the end of each year for three years, how much was it? Was well, 3,000 was the amount. Okay, so. 3,000 notice. So this uh, amount was 1,000, not 3,000. So this is 1,000, not 3. So this is 1,000. So meaning the future value factor of an annuity will be just future value, interest factor of annuity is actually going to give us 1.07 to the power of 3 minus 1 divided by 0 0.07 times 1,000, so the answer is 3,200, 14.9. So this is it on the future value interest factor of annuity that we need to go for, please. So we can get down to the other example here where we look at T. Um, the future value of an ordinary annuity can be viewed as occurring at the end of the last year of the cash flows period, whereas the future value of annuity due can be at the beginning, like I mentioned. So if annuity due, if it was annuity due, an example, find the future value of an annuity due, okay, where 1,000 is paid at the beginning of each year for the next than that. So meaning it carries an extra interest, so meaning that uh future value interest factor annuity due so future value interest factor annuity due 
So meaning that this one is going to give us amount, all right? Then open brackets, one plus R to the power N minus one over R, then multiply by one plus R. So here we have a 1,000. So 1,000, then 1 1.07 to the power three, then minus one over 0 0.07 multiplied by 1.07. So here, the answer is going to be 1.07 to the power 3 minus 1 divided by 0 0.07 times 1.07 then times 1,000, so 3,400, okay, 39, then 0 0.943. This is it. the future value interest factor annuity due. Please, you have to take note of this, what is going on here. So 3,000, okay? So 3,000, so meaning that this is only, okay? Okay, so the, we are talking about this as the, the future value to structure annuity due is giving us that amount, okay, for that given problem. Okay, then the uh, owner annuity present value. Okay, so and then getting down to the other one. So the present value is just discount, it's opposite. So present value, if you are given of this order annuity where the payments are, are done at the end, the present value annuity. Okay, so meaning the present value uh, annuity. So present value interest factor annuity. So a present value interest factor of annuity is actually going to be amount, then one minus one plus R to the power negative N over R. If it is just ordinary, so this is for ordinary. Okay, so it's when payments are done at the end of the period, so meaning that our present value interest factor annuity is actually going to be amount is 1,000, then one minus 1.07 to the power negative three, then over our R is 0 0.07. This is just about what we have. So present value interest factor annuity is actually going to give us one minus 1.07 to the power negative three divided by 0 0.07 multiplied by 1000. So it's giving us 2,624.316. Uh, so if it's a present value interest factor, I know it due carries an extra interest, so a present value, present value interest factor, annuity due, so meaning that it's going to give us the amount, the one minus one plus R to the power negative N over R, where the payments are done at the beginning, then multiply by one plus R. So meaning amount would have been 1,000, then one minus 1.07 to the power negative three, okay, over the 0 0.07, then here multiplied by 1.07, then this is the present value interest factor annuity due. So we can sort out this. This one multiplied by 1.07. It's giving us 2,000, 2,000, 
0.018, okay, 0 0.018. This is the, about what goes on as we are looking at the present value interest factor annuity due. So this is just a, one thing we really need to understand as we are looking at this present value interest factor annuity due is at the beginning of the period. So anything else, when you're talking about the beginning of the period, you look at it, the present value interest factor annuity due, and then the other one is at the end. All right, so this is just what goes on. So if you want to find the future value interest factor annuity due, provided that information, we are going to have now uh, future value interest factor annuity due, which is going to give us our amount of annuity, then we have one plus R, to the power n minus one over r. Then here you multiply this one by one plus r. So this is it on the due aspect where we are going to say an amount is 1000 here. So one pin, then 1.07, okay, to the power three, then minus one over the 0 0.07, then whatever it is multiplied by 1.07, this is on finding the future value interest factor annuity due. Then from here, we can actually finish up, okay? So this is 1.07 to the power three minus one, then divide by 0 0.07, and multiply by 1000, and multiply by 1.07, is 3,489, okay, 0.943 for the due of the future value. So this is just about what goes on as we getting down to these annuities. The formulas are given, so it's just in the matter going through uh, anything else that we need to go through, please. All right. So they are getting down to the amortization. So here, we just have to look at the beginning. It's an annuity due. At the end, is ordinary annuity. So this is a step to solve a time value of money, read problems thoroughly, create a timeline, uh, put cash flows and thorough hours on time, and all that. So we are now getting down. Let's get down to the last part of the time value of money where we look at the uh, a perpetuity I mentioned is a continuous cash flow. Okay, and all of perpetuity is equal to amount, perpetuity value of perpetuity is equal to amount over interest rate, which is over R. This is how you get the value of perpetuity amount of annuity over interest rate. This is how you get to the value of a perpetuity, okay, which is equal to this, okay. So now we are getting down to okay, um, amortization. Let's get into the amortization of a loan, okay. An amortization of a loan looks at uh, the breaking down of paying off or liquidating a loan in equal installments at a fixed intervals over the lifetime or loan obligation. The liquidation can be shown through a amortization schedule. All right, so steps to amortization schedule the payment period, that's a step. You have to look at the breakdown of a loan. So calculate the payment period, determine the interest rate in that period. Then getting down to compute the principal payment in that period then determine the ending balance in that period. All right, so now prepare a schedule for amortization for a loan of 1,000 kwacha that has been, they have been there. Okay, interest rate uh, charged at 6% per annum, three years, amount is 1,000, three years, 6% annual interest rate. 
So we need to find the payment period given that data and then see to read that we have a zero balance. We've got a 1,000 quarter loan that we're supposed to pay in three years at the interest rate of 6%. So we can create the schedule for amortization that we need to know at which schedule or looking at anything else that we need. All right. So now getting down to this breakdown, we can uh, sort out this uh, based on uh, whatever it is that we have. Okay. So what is happening is here we can uh, sort out. Okay. We can sort out. Um, or anything else that we have. Okay. So let us see how we are going to do it. So we have here, what we have is, uh, we have um, um, actually been given, we've gotten a loan of 1,000 that we need to uh, see how we're going to amortize, how we're going to amortize, how we're going to amortize it, okay? based on the, the information that has been given. The interest rate has been given. So we can check whatever it is we have. Okay, so let us see. We had amount as we got 10, amount is 1,000 kwacha. Then our rate that we've gotten from the bank is 6%. And our N is uh, three, three years. So you can find the product repayment, which is our R is equal to amount R over one minus one plus R to the power negative N. So this is the, the formula to use for product repayment. So our repayment is actually going to give us the 1,000 that we have, okay? Then our rate is 0 0.06 over one minus 1.06, then to the power negative three. Then from here, you can find our R, which is giving us, okay? So it's as good as saying 1,000 multiplied 0 0.06, which is 60, okay, 60 over one minus 1.06 to the power negative three, 0 0.1 something something, so 0 so our skiste divided by answer 374.11. So our R is equal to 374.11. Okay, so that's our periodic repayment. Now we are getting down to this, and then we can look at the loan amortization schedule, loan schedule. So on our loan schedule. What is going to happen is uh, we are going to have the period. Okay, so loan schedule is we're going to have a period, which will be one, two, and three. Okay, so we have one, two, and three. Then uh, we have the other aspect here we are going to look at is uh, um, the principal at the beginning. So we have the principal 
Okay. At beginning. Then we get into the other agenda here. So here we have interest paid. So we have interest uh, paid. Then getting down to the other one is periodic repayment. Periodic. Um, repayment. Okay, then we have the other aspect where we look at principal paid, principal paid. Then we have the loan balance. We have the loan balance, so this is it, the format that we need to go for as we are getting down to this one. So here is 1,000. The interest paid is 1,000 times 6 to 1,000 times 0 0.6, or 0 0.06, that is. So it's skiste. So you're getting a skiste here. The product repayment is 374.11, which is 374.11. The principal paid is 374.11 minus Kiste. So we paid the 314. The bank are they're claiming that that money <coughs> is there. So three. So the balance here is one thousand minus that, which is six eighty six eighty five point eight nine. So this is about the loan balance. So meaning principal paid. You are simply saying three seventy four. Uh, point one one minus a ski step. So we are getting the three fourteen uh, point one one. Then here we have this balance six eighty uh, five point eight nine. Then multiply it by zero point zero six. So we are getting forty one uh, point. One five. So the principal paid is three seventy four point one one minus forty one point one five three thirty two three three two. Uh, point. Einstein, yes, please. Where have you gotten this? Uh, eighty six eighty nine. Six eighty five. Six eighty five. Six eighty five. Oh, okay. It's the balance this side. Okay. Yeah, have you, have you, have you got it? Yes, I've seen it. Okay. Uh -huh. So this is a format for loan amortization. So the beginning principle is 1,000. You've gotten a loan of one thing, then the, the interest rate is a better. Is, are you okay with the 374.11? Are you okay with this figure? How I got it from? You correct you. That one, I'm okay. Yeah, so the principal paid is just the, the bank are claiming that the skiste kwacha this is their money so from this amount the skiste kwacha goes to the bank they've gotten it so they are just telling you that you have only towards the principal you have only paid the 314 which is this one then the balance is 1000 minus the 314 which is eight uh, six eight six eighty five point eight nine which is the beginning for this you multiply this one by six percent you are getting this interest so the, the payment is this one so we are going to say now 685.89 uh, minus the answer there with 352. So you are getting the 352.93. Uh, so this one is a balance which will come here 352.93. Uh, okay. Then multiply this one by 0 0.06. The interest you've paid is only 21.1. 
uh, 8. Then you can subtract the 374.11 minus 21.18. So about 352.1, 352.93. Meaning we're going to have a zero balance there. When you subtract this one minus that, you're going to have a zero. You would have finished paying the loan in three years' time. So the number of years that uh, that is indicated there is the time taken for an individual to finish paying for the loan. All right. So this is about time value of money that you really need to understand. Loan amortization is a very, very important part of the time value of money that as you look at corporate finance, company finance, this question comes. What is important for you to understand the concept is what is very, very important. So just look at the format. This format will help you guide, will give you a guide on how you prepare uh, the schedule for anything else. So if you go to the bank and borrow from anyone else, and then if you, if you are thinking as if they are overcharging you or anything else on the schedule, this is how you prepare this schedule. You can do a manual computation on the, the periodic repayment. Uh, based on this formula here, you substitute the figure, find this on your own, and then see how the the, the schedule will be. Uh, not only that, this is based on annual compounding. This is on annual, but you find that when they say monthly, the formula changes just a little bit. The R is divided by, by 12. The same formula applies for monthly compounding. This one was on annual compounding. So monthly compounding, the interest rate is affected. So what I mean is that our payment for monthly will be the formula in the question when they give you monthly will be amount R over 12, then over one minus uh, R over 12. Okay, one plus R over 12, then to the power negative 12, all right? This is only the monthly compounding of a loan amortization. If they say quarterly, you divide that R by four, all right? So here it was annual, is when we are doing it the way we have done it, because it's uh, the, the loan schedule that has been done based on annual compounding, which means you don't, the interest rate, the formula applies the same way it is. So if they say quarterly, you divide where they, you have the R there, you divide that R by four, it's quarterly. Semi-annually, you divide by two. For monthly, you divide by 12. All right, so the examiner can only ask you to go for the, for the annually one, or he can ask you to go for semi-annually, you divide by two, uh, or quarterly or monthly. Of course, the... For the day-to-day -day running of the business, when you get a loan from the bank, they, you, they deduct it from your space report based on monthly. But if, be mindful on the question, what the question is all, is all about. Can they say, yeah, it's annually, don't let it be. You use this formula for annually. If they say monthly, you just follow instructions of how the examiners uh, phrase the question. Unless there are any other questions, but uh, on amortization, go through whatever it is that I've explained, you will never go wrong. So we can end here for now. Thank you so much. Um, Stan? Yes, yes. Okay. okay, I think you can end. You've stopped recording, right?